Hey, you guys. All uh, right. I hope you're taking a break from uh, the bad news out in the world and coming to something creative instead. I would love to see that being the case. It's going to go on. You can postpone it for another half hour and take a look at some photo critiquing. And uh, let us know where you guys are. And thank you for somebody just liking. And uh, that's always really helpful. So if you like, tell us where you are. That's super helpful. I'm going to kind of be straightforward here, you guys. So I'm Mark Silver. I'm an author, educator, and photographer in Carmel, California, where many photographers lived, including Ansel Adams and Edward Weston. And uh, I want to let you know that our show today is brought to you by our friends at Bay Photo Lab. And you know that you got to make prints, and here's how you can do it. You can get 25% off on albums. Albums are always really cool because you can they're basically a book. And you can um, put together, like one thing we like to do is put together albums of our kids. You can put together an album of your trips. It's nice to have everything kind of consolidated into one place. And there's how you can do it. 25% off. There's a code in there. You can grab that. 10% off on frame prints. I only get frame prints, so it, it takes care of it all in one place, which is great. Bay Photo will print them and frame them. Super handy. I used to have to take my prints and go somewhere else and get them framed, and this puts it all in one place. And if you're selling your stuff, that's really cool because you can get the, you know, somebody orders, a, orders from you a frame print, you can just get it made, and they'll ship it directly to your client. Awesome. Thin wraps. Those are cool. You can see how they are thin against the wall. Those can look really cool. I have at least one hanging around my house, 20% off. So those are the current specials, and you'll always get 25% off on your first order. So after the show, head over to Bay Photo Lab, and you'll be in good company. Scott Kelby, Bob Holmes, Bambi Cantrell, some of the biggest names in photography use Bay Photo Lab. And hello, Christopher. Thanks for joining us from New York. I bet it's still cold there. It's cold here and in Carmel. <laughs> speaking of Bay Photo and Chris, Chris was our winner previously oh, on awesome. the Bay Photo print. So if you go to the AYP Club, you can see the print that he put up in his bedroom in New York City. Uh, and it was an awesome print that we looked at. So be sure to check that out on AYP Club. I saw that, and I I also want to remind you guys to uh, subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new videos, and, and well done, Chris. Okay, well, Jared, let's just dive right in. I'm going to turn on my screen here, and whose is this? All right, this is from our friend Lucian over in the UK. Uh, this one was taken... Uh, this is... Blenheim Palace, I believe that's how you say that, uh, in England. So this is, I guess, one of the royal residences. Yeah, and Jared pointed out that you've got tree motion there, yeah. And so that means a long exposure. It's, um, you know, it's got the leading line uh, going right up to the front door of this palace. You, you're, you can't help but look at it, right? And you're your eye gets led up there. Um, you know, so it's framed well with the leading lines. It's really one one line rather than two lines, but that's totally fine for a leading line. Your eye is just, you know, here's all this green and there's the, there's the roadway and it goes right up to the front door. Um, the blur of the trees is interesting. I, you probably know what I'm gonna say. I would, uh, I would like to see some kind of a punctuation point or a person in the frame. Could be you, and uh, you know we've we've talked about this. Like if you're on that path, you'd ta you'd have a long walk, but that's okay. Or you could have a friend of yours walk ahead and just go up to the path, or the front door. I would just say put a person in that frame, and that would. You know, that does a lot of things. It adds a punctuation point. It adds depth. We like to see life, I believe. 
You know, you're looking at a building. Okay, so put a life form in it. It becomes more interesting. Uh, that's point number one. The other, the only other thing is I would process those clouds a little bit more. You could put a gradient filter on there and make them darker. Uh, that's probably the easiest way to just pump up. You know, you've got some cool uh, sort of moodiness in the sky and some texture. I would just punch that up a little bit more. But the more important thing is put a person in a frame, in the frame, and it does make a difference. But thank you for sending that in. All right, who's next? All right, let's go to our friend Christopher. So these are some photos taken, I believe it was, he said, at the Chinese New Year celebration in Manhattan. Uh, the same Christopher, there you are. Well, yep. Christopher... Um, uh, so so let's see here. Little boy lights sparklers during the Lunar New Year parade at Manhattan Chinatown. The one on the left I like better. I you know I like the smoke coming out of the sparkler of the one on the right, but I like the one on the left because there's less distraction. The um, you know the hand is fine, but that sparkler over his head kind of distracts me from him. Yeah. So the one on the left works better for me. If you wanted to fiddle with Photoshop, you could pull over his hand from the right hand one and put it on to the left hand. Dan Milner, don't listen to what I just said. <laughs> he doesn't like to hear me suggest things like that. And frankly, I never do those things, but I know that it can be done in Photoshop. Um, but it, you could do a little combo and kind of bring out the best of each photograph. I really like the the composition also with the little boy on the left works. A, I like the way his eyes are looking kind of at, you know, they're looking down at the sparkler thing. Uh, the one on the bottom or the right doesn't, doesn't quite work as well. But I think you're better off just... Just working with the the one on the left, it's a cleaner composition and it's it's cool, you know, it's like the the dad or mom, you know, with the gloves on and the um, you know, all the debris from all the sparklers and stuff. Let me move myself out of here. Yeah, and his little shoes and, and the the Uggs. That that's definitely to me the 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 better photograph. If you could pull smoky um, the smoky sparklers over and just plunk those on there could be interesting but you don't even have to do that but good one Christopher I like it yeah. alright this next one is from our longtime friend Mache uh, Mache is, is here a, too yep reflection shot and edited in a phone good for you and I you know it looks like a double exposure, but it's not. Um, it's just the reflection. It's very cool. And you've got, you know, your black and white here. Um, tiny little thing. I would just darken this corner here, the lower left corner. You want to you want to get rid of anything that's going to pull. Yeah, right there. Pull the viewer's eye out of the frame, and then darken the two top edges. The two dark, the two top corners, same reason. Just think of it like when you look at your image, like after you've done all the things you're going to do with it, take one final look and see if there's anything that pulls your eye out of the frame. And the, the easy fix for that is just to darken it. And even with a phone, I don't know what you're using. If you're using Lightroom Mobile, uh, you know, it's not the greatest in the world, but you can do it. In terms of uh, doing a local adjustment, you could darken those those edges in Lightroom Mobile. It's going to be much easier to do it on a desktop, which is what I do. If I get um, you know a phone iPhone shot, I'll bring it into my desktop most of the time because you get I find it really hard to get those little tiny things moving around on the phone. I'd rather have more real estate that I'm working with, and I can I can you know you could fix that up in a in a heartbeat but anyway overall composition is really cool 
uh, the, you know, the woman, you, you've managed to get that reflection in such a way that it's kind of like their faces remain intact. And then you can see the tree behind, and it's a, it's a very interesting photograph. Good one. Okay. All right. Yeah, let us know if you are here so that we can call out this, your stuff. This one is from Damon, uh, and they just put uh, the question, any critiques? Well, <clears throat> this is going to sound like what you heard in the first one. You've got a you know you've got a really interesting color here the orange yellow yeah and you've got a frame there put something in the frame have somebody standing there and that would you know you're framing something but what's in the frame nothing really you know it's just another door and doors make great frames windows uh tree tree branches hanging over you know, so whenever you see a frame and you've got a, you know, you've got a really perfect rectangular frame there, think of it in terms of what can I do with this frame? You could put your camera on a tripod and you could walk into the frame and be the subject of that frame. You can never say I don't have somebody to put in the frame because you can be your subject. And some really great photographers definitely do that. So that's my only critique. You got it all dressed up. Put somebody in the frame, and it'll elevate this tremendously. Okay. Right. Uh, this next one is from our friend Gear, who, of course, we know from his lovely film photography that he's been doing. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is a summer story taken with a vintage camera, a Zeiss Icon... Zeiss. Uh, a Zeiss yeah. uh, Icon... Er, Ekrona, uh six by nine centimeters. Wow. On one twenty film. Six by nine centimeters on one. Okay, so it's a, it's not a square frame. It's a rectangular frame, as you can see, and it's shot with one twenty film. Which, for you guys who don't know, what one twenty film is, what some of my cameras back here use, but it's, it's two and a quarter inches high and in this case it's a two and a quarter three and a quarter so it's a rectangle that's pretty big just imagine two and a quarter about like that and about this wide you know 35 millimeters like about like this so you can see how much bigger it is that's called medium format and um, it gives you a very high resolution image you know when we're talking about a scanned image it's very high resolution um, in film it means that it, you can you can produce a pretty big print out of that and also that it's not going to be grainy so that's cool and you know the composition is really works out well because these th the two what do we have one two calves I think is yeah those are both calves and then we've got a horse in the background so they all kind of work together that's that's called three spot composition even though there's four uh, three spot can be minimum of three and it can be more than three and that's actually three spot composition it's in my book it's in there folks <laughs> and it is a form of composition that that works you know I will say this because do we know why all these composition elements work? Not really. I don't know that anybody's necessarily figured them all out, Like, but they do work. And three-spot composition just seems to be our eye gets drawn to these three or four elements, and it works. So the only here's the only little things I would do. I would, again, from what I said before, take the stuff where your eye gets pulled away. Take that wood in the, in the foreground there and darken it. Just darken it. Easy to fix in Lightroom. Just make a local adjustment. In the darkroom, we could burn it in. You know, we would use our tools to make... Burning in just means you're darkening it. And it is a darkroom technique. Because your eye kind of gets pulled back from 
the subject is is the the mother and the calf we want our eye just to go there so darken that you know you could even get rid of it all together that would be another option but you can certainly darken it and darken the top edge so that our eye isn't being pulled yeah right there two little easy fixes otherwise fantastic all and right. again bravo to using a medium format camera in today's world it takes a lot of work yeah we always love seeing your work so keep on posting yeah um this is from another friend of the show sir and uh let me tell you sir had a lot of really good photos from their trip to the isle of sky sky moon yeah things i say it um but this was one that i especially liked so yeah, so here's what you've got. You've got a clear-cut punctuation point with the, um, yeah, the lighthouse right there is your punctuation point. Mainly the, the uh, cylindrical part of it and the point of it. So you can get away with not needing a human in it because you've got a really good punctuation point. And your leading lines are just the coastline leading right up to it. That's kind of a, yeah, curvy leading line. So that works really well. I would t the only change I'd make is I'd darken those clouds. Yep, just darken that. Put a put a gradient filter on there. For two reasons: one, it will bring the clouds out, and number two, it won't have your eye pulled. So it, my eye just gets pulled to the left, where all that white space is, and you don't want that. You want the eye being led right up the center of that. Yep right there so just put a gradient filter over that and darken the clouds and you've got a you know finished print the the other thing it looks like there's a lot of black in there um i always process for them the farthest i can move the blacks and the farthest i can move the whites to get the highest dynamic range i've got and it looks like you've done that i'm just looking at the the white of the uh, you know the waves there is pretty white and then the black on the edge there and the bottom looks pretty black so yeah the only real change is just put the gradient filter on there and by the way I'd love it if you guys try these things and put them back in AYP club and uh, you know we can see kind of your before and after and see how that works out for you but again think every time you think about a photograph look at it like a window into you what you're seeing and you know just make sure your eye doesn't get pulled off in the wrong direction okay you don't want to pull the viewers eye out of the frame you want them to stay in the frame and that's usually done by darkening the edges or getting rid of sometimes you just crop it out completely all right, let's see what we got here. All right, what we've else? got two photos here from Alicia Jones, friend in Canada. Um, and she said, I love these photos, but I feel like I'm missing an element to them. Any suggestions? So that's the first one. That one's cool. You know, I like the, um, you've got your, you know, you got your subject, thank you. And you, and you have her nicely framed between those two uh, aspens it looks like and sitting on the log the the uh, branch really it's just uh, in your processing just a couple little things it's a little on the blown out side meaning it's just a little too overexposed so just bring down your exposure a little bit um, <clears throat> darken the top edge darken the corners just based on what I was just saying and then uh, see if you can stretch that dynamic range, if you can get those blacks and whites a little more prominent. The background, so here's what you do if you're working with a new Lightroom. This is a, a really cool feature, is you make a mask out of the subject, and then you can invert it, and then darken the whole, all the background. Leave her, she's exposed, She's a little overexposed. You could bring her exposure down a little bit. Maybe just pull the highlights down. 
But I would just take that whole background, all that in your masking. And I do have an, a course that we finished a couple weeks ago, the poplar trees, yeah. I have a course I finished a couple weeks ago that shows you how to do this. And um, it's such a handy feature, you guys. I can't tell you how handy it is because it would select her. You invert it. You process the background, make it dark. Let her make it look like the background's really dark and she's kind of being lit by, you know, maybe a, a reflector or something. And what it'll do is just put the highlight right on your subject. So why don't you try that? If you don't know how to use that new feature in Lightroom, it's also in Photoshop. And um, I guess you can wait for my class, which will be coming out pretty soon. Otherwise, um, that's, that's just going to make that, just elevate your photo just instantly just by doing that. And that's all I would focus on at this point all right was uh, there another version too that yeah th this was another one that uh she also felt something was missing from it's it. the same thing that you know we got too much white in the background pulling your attention away it's interesting how you put it on an angle like that that's cool but uh that one's even easier you just take that sky put a gradient filter on it and darken it Sometimes, you know, it's funny how when we do these critiques, there's kind of a theme, a general theme. And, and the theme, yeah. theme today is, is uh, don't let your viewer's eye get bounced out of the frame. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the lesson for today. Um, going back to Sarah's photo, um, he just commented, uh, I had five minutes. It was raining constantly. Wow. So that's a good to get in there get and that. use your time efficiently. Because yeah. I saw he took other photos uh, around here, too, uh, that were also excellent. So yeah, and you got to just wait for that moment. The filter is just done in your post-processing. And, um, oh, using that same Lightroom feature, you can, you can just take the sky. Yeah, you can mask the sky and just darken it. So, you know, there's a lot of different tools you try. I... It's trial and error for me most of the time. Does a gradient filter work? Nah, that didn't look right. Let's try darkening the skies, you know, with a with a mask. And, you know, just all these tools were things that we could do in the darkroom. They were just a lot more time-consuming. You know, we did do these things. In the, we would have burned the top edge. You know, it just takes time. The other thing that's nice, you're not standing there breathing chemicals. I mean, I don't miss having my hands, you know, in developer and fixer. And it sounds really romantic, but I don't miss it at all, frankly. It's one of these days I will go back into the dark room mainly to prove to myself that I can still do it. Uh, it's like last year I went snowboarding. I hadn't been snowboarding in about six, seven years. And I thought, okay, I hope I can still snowboard. And I did. I did fine. I mean, it took me few runs to kind of get my sea legs back and I was going down black diamonds at the end of the day um, so you know that's the, if you are into your darkroom work keep doing it don't stop all right do we have a few more we got a couple yep. more minutes this one's from Michael Elliott who is a very big fan of film photography um, came with the hashtags uh, shoot film, believe in film, film is not uh, dead, analog photography. And this one is called A Modern Love, Sto a Modern Love Song. Uh-huh. You know, it's interesting. I feel like there's something missing. I don't quite get it. And I'm just being forthright with you. I'm just looking at it like, okay, what's the story here? Somebody left a wine bottle and a glass. Where, where are the people? You know, put the people into this thing. Okay, somebody's calling my phone. No, thank you. First rule of video production, always turn off your phone. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like I'm coming in late in the story. What, what happened? Where do they go? Who's drinking this wine? 
it a it leaves me asking questions, which isn't a bad thing, but um, I feel like it's we're missing that element. Like, put somebody in that frame. There's a glass, there's a bottle, there's a chain. You got kind of a set ready to go, and I just want to I want to see who's in there, even if it's you drinking the wine. Like, good, get in the frame. Hop in there, <laughs> you know. Think about it like a movie, you know, you got a movie set and, you know, and a set is what's your actor. Where does your actor appear? And in this case, you, you kind of got a, you got the set all ready to go, but I don't see the actor. That's my critique, but uh, bravo on shooting with film. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. This next one is from Christy, just submitted. Wow, um, that's cool. Mount don't know Fuji, where right? this is, uh, yeah. If this is Mount Fuji, let us know exactly where this is. Is at. it Mount Fuji? I mean, I'm I, I, I'm not sure. That was my first like instant Kilimanjaro or Fuji would be my guesses. Uh, the train I think would make it Mount Fuji. My guess. Yeah, you should let us know uh, in the chat. I'm assuming that you are here in the chat. It's so. a very dreamy. It's like there's a lot of motion in here. In fact. The trees are moving, the train is moving, the mountain is stable. You know, that kind of gives it a dreamy feel. I like it. You know, mm -hmm. you've got kind of everything in there that it looks like I see grain. Or is that? I don't know if you put grain into it. Yeah, I don't know. That might be noise. If it's noise, I'd get rid of it. it looks Now that I'm looking at it, I believe it's noise. Get rid of that noise, yeah. Now that I can see it, it's just get rid of the noise. It doesn't noise never enhances a photograph. Grain, yes, grain is can can be a part of the art form, but unfortunately, noise never adds to a photograph. So just just use your what? That's Mount Shasta, and there's a train running by. I didn't know there were. Okay, well you really fooled me on that one. Mount Shasta is in California. It's about seven hours north of me. Oh, wow. Yeah, Northern California. You know what it makes me think of? Mm. It makes me think of those old films where you've got, like, the, the British guy talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's like, and here is Mount Shasta, you Mount know, like Shasta, that kind yeah. of thing from back in, like, the 50s and stuff. And and I love that, that kind of aesthetic and feel. Yeah. I didn't know there was a train running by Mount Shasta. That is a train, right? Maybe it's not a train. This that, right here? No, but... Okay, that's not a train. Oh, down there? What is no, that? No, I don't think it's... it's a I'm fence. Not sure what it is. Okay, I was seeing a train, but I believe that's just some sort of a fence thing. Okay. It totally looks like a train, though. I don't think it is now that I look at it. Okay, nice photograph. Just get rid of the noise. I have a good question from Perry. Perry wants to know, what makes grain better than noise that is a good question you know i think it's one of those aesthetic things grain is something that you knew was built into the film and there's i think if we did a comparison side by side you'd see there's something more aesthetic <laughs> mm -hmm. i guess that's the only way of if you thought of it in terms of sound like if you almost purposefully, you can have like feedback. Some artists have used feedback on purpose, like on their guitar. Um, I can actually, I can give a give, give, example. Give us a good mind. As an audio miner, uh, I had to actually study audio a lot. And one of the interesting techniques um, that I learned was the idea of taking like a bass soundtrack or you know like the bass guitar or something and you have two versions of it that are playing at the same time yeah but one of them is like slightly distorted exactly so you're doing the distortion you're yourself. doing it on purpose noise is is like if it just ah you know your ears just try to reject it ah that doesn't sound good and i guess that's just kind of an analogy with grain and noise noise is always just going to look ugly it's lumpy it just looks yucky, you know? It doesn't... If that were grain, it would be much more uniform. 
Yeah. It wouldn't look splotchy like that. And that's the difference. That splotchiness is what gives it a kind of an ugly quality. Yeah, it's not even. As Perry pointed out, I agree. The uneven nature of the noise is distracting. Yeah, grain would be a, a grain is going to be uniform throughout the whole thing. There's going to be a certain look to that grain. It's not changing. It's, I mean, some of it will be more apparent, but it's all uniform, and you know that's what makes it part of the art form. A grain grainy f photograph could look really cool. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, we should do a little show on that. It wouldn't hurt. I was just thinking the yeah. same thing. To, to take some of these points and go, why don't we define some of these more clearly here? Yeah. Yeah, feedback is can be used, very well used. I mean, the Beatles did it. You could hear Jimi Hendrix use it, use it with his guitar. But it's controlled by the artist. Grain is, some, is basically controlled by the artist because you chose that kind of film you did not like it and the sooner you get rid of it the better yeah you can you can process noise and turn it into grain that's another you can do that it's basically just getting rid of the noise and putting grain on top of it which is fine you can do that that's that's another option you know it's just basically you're getting rid of it or you're making it look like grain Adding that consistency. Yeah. All right. I think we have time for one or two more. Yep. All right. Let's go to our good friend, long time AYP. Oh, member, yeah. Bert. Bert. Uh, February baseball season. I think they're, they're working on their practice, getting ready for the baseball season ahead. And here's a great shot that he caught. You know, Bert is such a pro. Look at how he framed that. It's perfect. You know, it's like the catcher kneeling right center smack in the frame the big flag up there you know bird is a pro there's a reason why he has a baseball book <laughs> that's right and the reason why he's got copyright the only tiny little thing bert <laughs> is i'd burn the top a little bit more make it a little darker that's it that's my only little critique and maybe the the right hand edge just to, again, you know, keep our eye 100% on the catcher. That's such a minor point, but um, easy to easy to fix. But, you know, your composition is just spot on. You're right in the frame, all those angles of how the, you know, the catcher's knees and feet and how you didn't have his, his right hand over the, the guy in the background, you know. So you had to move around and to make that work. And uh, it's cool. All right. I think we got time for one more. One more. And thank you, uh, uh, Sayu from India. Thanks for joining us. I love all you guys. You know, thank you for turning in your stuff here. It's really helpful. And I, yeah. I hope and this helps you. If you're seeing this late, don't worry. We do our critique show generally about once a month yeah right? every so, um, few weeks so, three weeks so maybe submit your photos keep an eye out for when we do our next show yeah um here is i'm gonna just go ahead and bring it up here um so nancy was hoping for a critique uh edited versus raw uh valley of fire state park in nevada so that's wow. the edited one and here's the unedited image. let's go back again to the other one I mean, I it's more interesting. I think it's a little too much. I would say somewhere in between those two. Uh, go back to the other one. Yeah, I would just I would just pull it back. It's a the edited one's a little too red. And uh, yeah, just just tone it down. Just pop it right in between there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you already know what I'm going to say about the upper left corner. Burn that. And just try it. Try pulling that back. And let's see what it looks like in AYP+. Plus. All right, good, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Always really great to see your work. And I hope these comments help you. Um, we will schedule a show. You know, gave me an idea for these 
all these little points of photography that maybe people have questions about. Let's do a question show. Maybe Jared, why don't you pop in a, a thing into AYP Plus and even on YouTube and let's start gathering some questions that people have. Yeah. Let's do it next week. What the heck? We don't have anything else sure. planned. So next week we're going to take up your questions. What do you really want to know but you've always been afraid to ask about photography? Okay. Should I shoot in raw? Does that mean I have to take all my clothes off? Uh, <laughs> But seriously, give us, throw everything that you can think of. The weirdest question. Like, what's the difference between grain and noise? That's a good question. I'm going to take it up. We've got question number one. Uh, will you guys join us? Do you like that idea? Let's do it. Next week. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Next week. So we give, we're going to give you a whole week. Jared, put that up right away so we can gather yeah, questions all week. right after the show. And we'll put it into YouTube as a, a post also and on Facebook. Let's just put it up everywhere we can. Let's gather everybody's questions. Challenge me. Come up with the weirdest. We'll even go through on previous videos and Could see if there's any questions that we never answered. So we'll just kind of do a whole answering all your questions about photography. But rather than go off on something that doesn't really matter, give me the questions that you're having, you're challenged by. Okay, some, whatever it is. And if I don't know the answer, I will tell you I don't know the answer. But the good thing is, if I don't know the answer, I usually know somebody who does know the answer. Like if you ask me a really specific portrait question, I'll say, you know, that's a Peter Hurley. He's got an answer for that. Or if it's shooting, you know, a travel sequence for National Geographic, you know, that's Bob Holmes for you. But I know enough about their work to be able to answer for you from them. Okay, so let's let's go for it. Let's get a, let's think of your a bucket with questions in it. I know you have questions because I have questions. If I have questions about photography, I know you do too. What's a good photograph? Now that's that's one of those completely unanswerable questions. What's a good photograph? Like, what's a good piece of music? What tastes good? What's good food? Cannot answer that question. You can answer it for you. You can answer it for somebody you know, but you can't. There's no universal answer to what tastes good. I mean, there's tribes in Africa who might love larva, eating raw, you know, termite larva or something. I don't think that would taste good at all. Maybe somebody hates the taste of ice cream. It tastes ugh, weird. I don't like that. So that's all a, a matter of choice. But we can, we can look at those, all those other questions that you could bring up. And we'll take them up next week. Okay? So thank You've you guys. You've got to post up an AYP club. So anytime that you think of it, go over to AYP club and let us know your questions. Absolutely. Meanwhile, so remember to subscribe and enable the bell and like the video, leave your comments. I always see your comments and I comment on your comments whenever they need them. Sometimes they just need a this or a this, you know, but whatever it is, I try to reply to all your stuff. And uh, other than that, head over to Bay Photo Lab after the show, buy something from them. They, we gave you guys their you know, specials, just type in Bay Photo Lab special and you'll get to their homepage and you'll see what the specials are. Other than that, Jared, anything else we're missing? I don't think so, right? No, not that I can think of. Just be sure to check out our videos and have a good weekend. We'll be uh, posting a video up on Saturday, or yeah, on Saturday. So be sure to check that out. You know, here's what I want you guys to watch videos. I want you to tell your friends about AYP because... We hear constantly we're the best YouTube channel on the on YouTube. I mean, people, I love when I hear that. But tell your friends about it. Let's not keep it a secret. Okay, well, other than that, I want you guys to remember to say this with me. Remember to get out and capture your own images of life. See you guys soon. Take care. Stay creative.